Wait. Where is this cancer? Where's cancer? Who's cancer? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, hey, guys. Oh, go. that reminds me, though. <laughs> you had to go through me, don't you? <laughs> Hello, everyone. Galactic Storm here. Welcome to the show. And today we have another episode of our Bash Bots Aftermath. And today we have two guests. We have me, we have Wither, a.k.a. Wishbone Migronic, and we have, like I said, our two guests. The first one is one of the co-founders of Gary's Wars, Mr. Kinch, the guy that drives uh, ETA. And then we have this other guy, uh, um, yeah, we have you this forgot. guy. I forgot the, the screen tag. Damn it. Hammer Man. Yes, Hammer Man. The Hammer Man. He, he is Mecha. Mecha Tech. I was going to say Gammy Fast at first, and I'm like, wait. Why do I always get these names screwed up? But yes, Mecha Tech and the creator of Tektronic. Gents, w welcome. Hello. Yes. <laughs> Pleasure. Yes. Pleasure to be here, finally. Finally. After Only you. Only took five episodes. Took like that's a long time for me to appear on something. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, obviously. Oh uh, yes. So but... yes, another uh, ambitious episode. We get not one but two rumbles in which you two are featured in, and then we have a crazy whack a mole thing with uh, tranquilizer and hobo drew, and then we have the battle of the flippers with Mars and Claymore. So. Uh, let's talk to the new kid in the block. Actually, I'm the newest one, but yeah, sure, why yes. not? Uh, we're gonna talk to Mr. Gammy Fast here. Oh, wait, I forgot. Gammy. Gammy, I'm sorry. This is like the third time you've done this. this yes. Is this, is, this is brutal. Yeah. This is brutal. I'm sorry. Oh my god. Yeah, that's pretty much all that guarantees the, like, the outcome of the rumble because nobody even remembers what my robot is. Yeah. Aww. But the, it's it's introduced <laughs> a lot in the intro though, like within the very first episode. There's like a few yeah, episodes. It is, it is the first. It is the first hammer since data flow. Yeah. Uh, 2019. It's also the first hammer to feature a flamethrower. Oh it's yes. Basically discount blacksmith. Yes. Or your money back guaranteed. So what was your uh, inspiration with Tektronic? Uh, why did you make a hammer bot after seeing what happened with Dataflow and that? What made you say, oh hey, I want to use one of the most complicated things to use on Gmod. Why? Two Tell us. Things. The first one, I needed something unique to get in. I was not going to try to go through pre-qualifiers because I know that all my robots are garbage. So I'm not going to do that. So I made something that kind of sucks, but it's really complicated. Two, I like blacksmith, so it was kind of a, it was kind of a, a coincidence in that case. But we figured it out because I'd originally made the robot about a month in to what like I was basically like brand new at the time when I decided to start making this. It took a good week or so to actually build the robot. And Ooh. Then figure out. I have to rebuild the whole thing. Oh. Well, what was wrong with it? Uh, the visual chassis was almost a meter shorter than the actual physical one, and I didn't realize that that was a problem. So I had to make a whole new robot the night of inspections, and show it to Kroger to make sure it worked. Oh. Wow. I, I remember you working on that one for like two weeks or something. I just saw it laying about in the pits. Yeah, it was it was interesting. Like the fact that ninety percent of it was um, code, trying to figure out how to get it to like not kill itself every time it fired. Ooh. Heart attack. Oh yeah. Heart That's attack. typical of uh, of axes. Oh. Yeah. It is the first counter rotation hammer to ever like show up. The first, like, non-admin counter-rotation well, hammer to be uh, part of G-Wars, so... Well, technically speaking, mm. if, if we really consider it, Heart Attack showed first, so technically that's the first one. Yeah. The first one on the main show. And then Wag Boss was also another one, and I did the right. code for that, so... Nice. You're welcome. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. 
always nice to see some unique robots in the game. And now, with the oldest bot in the competition, ETA, Mr. Kinch, where did you get your inspiration for ETA and when or how old is this bot exactly? Easy, it's British, he wants to build a flipper. <laughs> Oh. That's, a, that's a good start. Um, <laughs> the So, I'm not 100% sure if uh, E-Rod, or of course formerly I-Rod, is older than, e than ETA. It's pretty close, so I, I can't remember. But ETA was made back in November 2014, I believe. Probably about a month after uh, we started doing G-Wars. And... I remember it specifically. We, we really wanted we really wanted something that was going to be powerful. Um, this is before Robo Bowler came, uh, came along. So our sort of idea was we used thrusters for basically everything, and then we started using hydraulics a little later on. And this was one of the going to be the robot that like shook everything up because um, it was ba mainly only me and uh, Koss, the other co-founder, fighting. Uh, we had we have our, we had other guys with us as well. Um, but we were trying to make large strides, like, quite quickly. Um, and ETA's flipper at the time was ridiculously powerful. It couldn't get underneath anything, and it was incredibly slow because we didn't have any weight tools back then. Uh, we literally used the uh, G-Mod wheels that are included in the, the base game, and we used thrusters to move... Well, we didn't even use thrusters to move around by that point. It was only for turning. So trying to move forward and backwards was a nightmare. If you ever try and build without using weight tools in, in, uh, in Gary's mod, you'll know. You'll you'll find out like how much of a nightmare it is. Um, so, ETA was born out of a necessity to stride further. Basically, I don't know how else to put it other than that. Um, oh. The the name the namesake. I think I think again we're talking we're talking eight years ago now. We're talking when I was fourteen. So I can't remember a lot of this stuff. I was a wee babby. Um, but I think it was, it was definitely eat that ass. It is yeah. definitely not <laughs> eat that ass. And I will put it, I will say on the record, the ETA does indeed stand for exit the atmosphere. Um, oh, man. I thought it was uh, an estimated time. Holy shit. Yes. No. So that's the that's the trick. I I wanted a thing like Dan Tom Kier, and I thought DTK is pretty cool. I like that. Um, so, but I just I don't know I don't know how it popped into my head. Uh, but I was looking for names. I was thinking of Gravity. Gravity was a big inspiration for ETA. Mm -hmm. and I thought, okay, let's let's see if we can play with this a little bit and uh, exit the atmosphere. I thought, mate, that's great. You're leaving the you're leaving the planet's atmosphere by moving being flipped by this thing so it definitely felt right and uh and we kept it so um there you okay. go or, or gently put out the arena yes uh, yes yeah <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> so with the besides whether making your uh, your whole redesign were there other like internal upgrades that you wanted to make with an eta before starting the comp um eta <laughs> ETA in of itself is a it, it's almost like a it's a it's a pretty silly bot right because it's it, 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 it's a huge flipper there's no point in that flipper being as big as it, as it is so for any this the main the main upgrades that that robot needed especially from last season was a better uh, a better wedge and I believe oh, I'm gonna get shot if I'm uh, if I'm incorrect now I believe that George uh, or um, George the Jedi, uh, who built Tracker, who was actually the one to help me build the uh, previous season's uh, version of ETA, because uh, I had not been around uh, a lot prior to season three of Bash Bots, so uh, I need—I definitely need some help with it. Oh. So fixing the wedge, making it as powerful as it could be legally, of course. Um, and mainly a lot of the, and some code things, of course, because again, you guys seem to change the code every every bloody week. So yes, we do. <laughs> oh yes, yeah, that's cool. So when it came to the week of, or I would say not the week, but the fight card, whole week of fighting. Yes, a whole week of fighting. Yes, 
And now... So off race week, Robo fighting week. Yes. Row seek. Yes. So it's uh, Raw Geek. Oh yes. Now with the very first fight, we probably know where this was going to go anyhow. Amethyst versus Goldeneye. This was not the first time these guys met. Uh, they met in Season 1 uh, with the Amethyst being s and then Goldeneye being Spinny Boy gets obliterated. In Season 2, I believe... Or no, he was they three. did not encounter each other in Season no, 2. No, because season I would three was the Season 2, yeah, yeah. The big fellow. Yeah. Now, if you, if you realize what Amber was doing prior to the competition, it was... It was pretty easy to understand why. Yeah. Because it was, it and Smoodle were on a taker of pretty much over 15 tournament wins in a row every time it entered. People oh, yeah. had to ask him very nicely not to win. Yes. That still happens, but... It still happens. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And now this one was another massacre. Um, basically dismantled I it. I that. It was pretty close for most of it. Yeah. But he still get, but he still got killed. Either yeah. way, I was gonna say there was a, there was certainly a turning point in the fight that um, things were not gonna go Goldeneye's way, right? Yeah. Um, it just wasn't. It just wasn't gonna happen. Uh, I have to say, I while I love the guys behind both of these guys, both these robots, I hate them. I hate the robots so much. With a burning passion in my soul, do I hate Amethyst. I hate flat robots, especially ones that have spinners on them. Yes. If I ever have to fight that thing, I will cry, because ETA can definitely not get under that front wedge, and I'll just get my uh, my ass slapped around, and I'll be very sad. And cry. So, uh, I, I <laughs> gather you don't like Bloodsport? Um, <laughs> do you want to take a guess? I'll no, take that as a yes. It's a over a spinner. It's a very flat spinner. He's, he's crying right now, don't worry. He needs just a, I think some of the tissues. <laughs> he's in pain. Yeah. <laughs> it's over the stadium, But I know these uh, spinners, please. Never, never, if I ever, if I ever have to go up against any of those spinners, I will, uh, I will immediately forfeit. Yeah. So, oh. so I've decided uh, which one's becoming a low overhead spinner. Yeah, when I like friends. Oh my god. <laughs> Uh, You're about to witness beef turn into steak. <laughs> beef turn to steak. Yes. Yeah. What, what would you, what do you think, Mecca, between Amethyst and Goldeneye? It was. I mean, at first it looked pretty close, but after the first minute, as soon as that first wheel was gone, it was pretty much over. Because yeah. that's usually what happens with Amethyst. Is whenever it gets your first wheel, it's like done. Your whole fight's over. You're just like trying to survive. To yeah, I, I I will admit too that Goldeneye was definitely getting some good hits, but once it started falling apart, I'm like, okay, it's gonna be it's gonna be like uh, epi it's gonna be like season three between the two, someone is going to get eviscerated. What do you think? Or I what do you think? Say, with it? I, I will say, uh, Amethyst is I think Prova's favorite role of this season because he like. In comps prior to Bachelors, he was like, ah, yes, kill him, take off his wheels, do a slow and painful death. Oh. <laughs> Make him suffer. Okay, so yeah, for Matthew. And this was yeah. another one who was going on a pretty good streak of either wins or podiums prior to yeah. the season. Yeah. It yeah. was only about a month old at the time of the, at the, time of the tournament, but. Uh, I think a bit. No, he. No, because Bachelors were filled in some. And uh, it was before as proto Amethyst in competing, which it was like it's I think it was like at least four months old that Bashful had. He just kept upgrading it and fixing it. I don't remember it having in my uh, terms. Yeah. It's always nice to see a uh, robot get exploded. Oh, uh, let's get to the first number rumble of that night. Firewave. Tektronic, Kumicho. Did I get that right? Okay. Yes. Well, what was your plan yeah. first off when getting into this fight? Uh, 
win. Excellent strategy. Basically, the basically the whole idea was um, that's some good strategy. Me yeah. and Hobbit <laughs> decided it was a great idea to team up and try to like get the Frenchman, but it didn't work because as soon as the fight started, it was pretty obvious that like one of them was not in. <laughs> oh. We could, uh, well, you were definitely getting some really good hits between the two, but I, I, I was honestly thinking that, you know, Tektronic was going to get this one, but then Fire Wave took a wave, or took a, uh, took a wheel from, uh, Kumicho, and that counted, or that did a count out, and he was out. So, from that, I would say that was basically going to be the end of it because he got a kill, you didn't and with the hammer you know, those things are hard to get a kill from but with the effectiveness now um, you know, that could be a, a, a factor but in the end, it really wasn't Firewave got a kill you didn't yeah, yeah, even, even, with the, um, even with the ending there, it ended up being pretty decently close because um, I got basically every other category except the grab, except, uh, if I do this, which oh, was, yeah. in the end, that was, you know, that's how it goes, because I ended up not getting any KOs. He got the KO, I tried to make it look like I got a KO, but I didn't, so. Oh. Yeah. It was 14, 13, all the cards, so. Yeah, that's, that's close. I, I personally am a, huge, a big fan of uh, Tektronic, as I, as I said, I like these, I like these um, Axe Bots in particular. Um, they, you know, they've never been particularly strong in G Wars, literally since the beginning. We've, we've never seemed to really get them to work the way we want them to, especially in terms of damage at least. Spinners have always been king and flippers. Um, but I hope one day that we can see some Axe Bots actually sort of you know, pop, come alive, see some proper wins. Personally, I thought you should have got have won that fight. No, 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 not this in Firewave. Firewave is a is a good robot, big fan. Um, but personally, thought Tektronic should have taken this one. But let's be real, the real hero is Grammy. Let's be fair. You're right. We should have had uh, we should have had Hobo Drew come on the show because that was he was the original creator of the of the Grammy mini bot. And it was literally all hit, like, we just came together, we're like, <laughs> put a flamethrower on the gramophone. And he was like, yeah. bet, I'll do it. Bet. And it was basically history from that point. It was like, it was easy at that point, because all you had to do was put a flamethrower on a gramophone, give it a couple wheels, and say, okay, we made a robot now. Wow. Best thing ever. Amazing. Oh, I will say, the better, the... Well, there was a good Monty. hammer back in the day, but that that hammer was more of it was a wedge with a uh, hammer shaped screw, which probably uh, Moldy remembers. What that hammer sloped was this? Armor. Sloped yes. armor. Yes, yes, I do remember sloped the armor. That's right. hammer. That wasn't really a hammer. I I made um I made Magnus back in the day. I don't I don't think it was the first act well hammer bot that we'd done. Uh, but I do remember it being good at pushing, and when it came to the axing, it wasn't that good. <laughs> no. Good push spot, that was about it. Oh, That, that is most <laughs> hammer, sadly, for now. Mm. But, you never know, next season there might be, the winner might be a hammer. Because we've had, uh, I think, yeah, we've had a horizontal and two flippers, so... I think it's tectonic. Tectonic to next, next season. It's I actually started to make a new one. And it actually like does decent damage. It doesn't like it's not world bending or anything, but we've made enough changes to the code and made it viable enough that they can at least do something. Nice. Well, we will love to see it next year. Yeah. And then it gets put up against fucking Cosmo. They yeah. probably will. Though that or Amethyst. I've actually gotten close to beating Cosmo. There's uh, I fought Cosmo three times. Two of them were actually decently close. I almost beat him the first time. Because I ended up sniping one of his, one of his like support cover things, 
Oh. Uh, but right yeah. around the right around the thirty second mark, he got my chassis just enough to make it go boom. That's pretty much uh, the theme with Cosmo. It's like you don't it, think it's gonna win, and then it just does. Yeah. It's the most boring and best throw. Yes. Let's go with Rumble number two now. Tracker, ETA, and Ace Five. I'm gonna be honest with you. It was either going to be between Tracker and ETA. I don't see, I didn't see Ace Five doing as much flips compared to you two. So I was quite surprised when I found out that it was a close decision and it went towards ETA's favor. So, uh, uh, Moldy, or Mr. Kinch, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Either or. <laughs> Either or. Same person. Same person, different thing. It's still me, I promise. What was your plan between these two guys? Oh, uh, well, uh, as, as in a lot of my fights, I think I am still over overestimating my chances when I go into the arena with guys like, um, with people like Nikki. And even, even George, even though George is, you know, a very experienced and old builder, I think I still over fancy my chances against him, I have to admit. And it would help that George built his own robots. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> oh, the murder. And what I was saying is that, funnily enough, so let's, let's start the start from the beginning. The fight, I, again, I thought I fancy my chances here. I, ETA is known as a consistent rubble winner, or it used to be at least, I don't know. Still has that reputation or not. But I... That's fine. Uh, well, <laughs> you were doing good at that I mean, last one, it but did then win. Uh, it did, yes, it did win, but it wasn't as effective as I thought it was going to be, un unfortunately. Until so you flipped plan... yourself into the pit. Oh yes, that yeah, that's that's not uh, that's that not was that. that was um, fun. <laughs> I I thought that I would be able to take out um, Ace Five pretty quickly and then move on to Tracker. Um, what I didn't really see coming was that. I really thought Ace Five were going to have me out a couple times. I was really, really fighting for that place. And turns out, after I've rewatched, I've rewatched the fight a few times now. I really think, honest to God, Ace Five should have won it. I really do. I, I think they were the most consistent. I, I only did, I only did well at the end, like last thirty seconds. I really think I only started doing well at that point. Well, we, I, I think. Or I was a judge or something, or something. We were watching that fight, and we were like, oh, it, it's, uh, like, we basically marked out Ace 5, because it wasn't between the other two more. Ace yeah, 5 basically just sneaked in. Ace That's... 5 basically more sneaked in, like, in between where you two were having a go, and then he's like, oh, I'll go to you. See, now, it might be, it might be more the case, but, I don't know, to me, to me, I was always, it's a common tactic that I have with, uh, with ETA is because he's quite a it's quite a slow quite a slow machine and d doesn't have the greatest turning or just maneuverability in general. I find myself running away to get a a bit of a run up. I can't just sort of slide underneath like uh, say like Mars does or Claymore. I can't do that. I have to get a bit of a run up or sort of maneuver myself so I can make sure I get the the side that I want to attack. Um, when those guys come in, they can just slide underneath me, especially Ace Five. Ace Five just got underneath me so many times and came in and flipped me. They will, I think they were way more aggressive than I was personally. Um, maybe not. I don't know about the control element of it, uh, but definitely on aggressiveness and even you know actual effectiveness as well. Because we were all thrown up onto the um, onto the what do you call the spinning things? Where Bruce, uh, drums. D yeah, you know, yeah, you know what I mean. I can't remember <laughs> the to. the drums or whatever. Uh, yeah, the drums of death. I, I think I think all of us got a little bit of drumming at some point, so uh -huh. it was all pretty, all pretty even. So, yeah, honest, honest to God, I really thought Ace Five had it. I was, I, I thought I was, I, you know, I was okay with losing there if that was going to be the case. But uh, here I am. Yes. <laughs> Just yeah. about. Oh yeah. And yes. that's the first win as well. That was my first win of Batchbox. One and uh, four. It's, you're a lot now. It's, uh, I think it? that's three. No. <laughs> Three, three losses so far, one win, I think. Bashbots season three and four. 
Uh huh. Could be worse. Could be worse. You're one and one, and you basically took out one of the biggest flippers in the comp, and then you have another. You took out two of the be- or two of the flippers out out of the competition, basically, with your win. So you yeah. still have it. You had a chance, quote unquote. I I will give a quick fun fact. Uh, like tracker right now is zero and two, right? Yes. In the comp afterwards, the half which is four vats, it won. So that just shows that I really got just unlucky this season. Oh with yeah. The fights. Like it could have yeah. literally just been the champion, but no, it, it's it had to. Uh, uh, yeah, the two fights. It got, fights. It got yeah, screwed over. It's an amazing role. Oh, yes. This Ooh, one. That is thoughts in post, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tranquilizer and El Monte Cargas. Uh, both one and one. And uh, Tranquilizer was able to beat him within, what, a unanimous decision? Yeah. Right? Well. At this least now we know. Yeah. At least now we know that uh, that Tranquilizer has a one hundred percent win rate against forklifts. Yeah, <laughs> it's the first forklift bot in Bashbots in eight. In case anyone, yeah. in case anyone d- d- knows or that. So yeah, yeah. For you historians but, out there, Bashbots I think I think it's also officially the first robot, which is more technical talk, but it's the first robot in Bashbots. To use sliders, because for the forklift system you need to use a slider. Because we haven't had a punching weapon yet, we haven't had a cannon. Which, you never know next season, uh, uh, like a Larry can show up with those. Uh huh. Or, or I can make a punch or a wishbone if I really want to. <laughs> doesn't Trank, or doesn't the boost have a, a punch bot? Yeah, yeah, he does, but uh, it will be probably be uh, tranquilizer back in the time. Yeah, he because tranquilizer is tranquilizer. But there was a, there was an interesting uh, there was an interesting thing that happened. Um, was it was it his forks or was it his Shremek that got stuck in, within the wall? Uh, Shremek. His Shremek. <laughs> so yeah, was it his Shremek or? I think it basically in the wall over there because in between like for fights I have to stand there as like a standing. Room. Yeah, because of course the drivers are in the corner of the map and just driving from there on the corner of the arena. So basically, in in there, there's actually an, are an actual gap, like the uh, like where stuff could fit through. Like for I think, don't know if it's happened yet, but I know in a fight, uh, like the sponsor wall in front actually gets taken up and gets stuck in there. Oh. So, it is a known gap, and I didn't know this happened because I wasn't there for this fight, but mm. yeah, so stuff can get stuck through, and I hope Robo fixes it next time, whenever he gets around to fixing the arena. Yeah. But that's also about the time when he fixes the road Robo, and that's also about the time where he makes a new battle box. So. Yeah, we'll probably get him on later. So yeah, final episode, let's do it. <laughs> or something like that, who knows. So, anything else that we have to say about uh, these two before we go on to the side card uh, matches? I, I, I do like the forklift, and I've actually recently done very well in mini comps and comps. I know, so I got murdered by one. Yeah. I know. It, it's, it's amazing. I would, love, I, I would love to see Montagagas come back. Um, and actually get a little bit, you know, get a little bit further. Uh, I, it's a good, it's a good robot. Uh, I really like it. I'm a big fan of it. I like, uh, to be fair, I also like Tranquilizer. I know. Um, but, uh, just, you know, nothing, nothing beats a fork one, I guess. That's, that's I, great. I have yeah. a, I have a... I, I do hope he, he, instead of having the longest in the world, has uh, shorter ones and then wins. Yeah. I have a love-hate relationship with this bot. I like it, but every time I go in a mini comp, I have to face it and die. Yeah. No, just get good. <laughs> I did. I every time I hit the damn thing, it either goes down to the it either like 
brushes it away or it just like goes elsewhere and just recovers and I just always get pinned by the damn thing. But uh, anywho, that's that's for another time. For the side fights, we have, uh, what was the first one? It was Polis and Shock Factor. Shock Factor, from what we heard, had a lot of good grips and a lot of good smashes across the wall with uh, Kroga. And then Kroga just needed this perfect opportunity, I believe, and just udded a uh, shock factor out, out of the arena. That's Kroga's driving in a nutshell. He, he is an opportunist for the tooth. Just like Joe. Like, oh. he, when he sees a gap, he'll go for it. It's, it's interesting to see. I always picture people with uh, certain robots. And um, Badnik's robot that he's got here is not one that I would ever expect to see him with. I'm more used to Badnik having spinner robots. So having this, this one, I mean, again, we only saw it briefly, but it's very, um, it's very different to what I would expect him to enter. I expect that, that sort of robot to be entered by a British lab, personally. Yeah, um, I remember him entering that because Gregor was like, I want this because it's cool. Um, mm -hmm. He, like, remade it before the thing, because it was first Dark Cloud, which was, like, uh, basically a bit of a less wide version of it, a shittier right. rubber. And then he made this one. Which I it's don't know if Bandic is doing this one again. I, again, it's not to, not to this on the robot or anything, because it, 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 it looks like a pretty solid machine. It's just not one that I would expect to see Badnik driving, personally. Yeah. yeah. I would agree Next with that. Next time he's back with, like, a drum Well, not a drum because they don't work. I was going to say, a spinner. A spinner is what I expect him, expect him yeah. to be driving. <laughs> yeah. He, he should get on and make, like, a cool new spinner thing. Cause, yeah. We, yeah. We, we definitely need to talk to him but when... Uh, when we have the chance. Uh, what was Which the shock factor? Is it highlighted? Yeah, when he's not highlighted in, in the match. Um, yeah. What's the second fight? Uh, it was Hospice, Calcifer, and Spinning Mayhem. Again, yeah. with Spinning Mayhem, the uh, person passed away in December, so this was one of his last fights recorded. Um, this fight was. Definitely going to be between the two uh, grappler bots. Uh, Unfortunately to say, uh, yeah. given the situation, yeah, the uh, the lifting machines something they I really like. I really like how these machines work. I really would like to make something that just suplexes robots out of the arena. Yeah, me that too. Just sounds s silly, silly and great fun. Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, that's I think that's what I might try and focus on next. But uh, who's to say? Uh, yeah, no, it was a good fight though. I um, love, love to watch these sorts of things. So. Uh huh. Both of them. Uh, both of them. Uh, uh, then took care of spinning mayhem, but Marrow and Calcifer was able to have the whole advantage, and uh, would just get themselves the win. So, if we could see more Marrow and Calcifer in a fight, in fight night. That would be awesome because we get to see like how cool this, how good the bot is because it's a really good bot. Absolutely. Yeah, I love it. Anything you need to say about that, Wither? Uh, Calcifer is a cool looking robot. Um, Hospice, it looks a bit. Well, Hospice was I uh, completely unchanged for this, so I think that shows, and I hope. Well, he only shows up for fashion, so. Yeah. I hope Ginger actually works finally on his robot and fucking improves it because I he has the potential with it. Oh yes. It just he has to get it working better because if it's just this version then I expect him to go uh even worse. Yeah. I expect it to go worse, yeah. Yeah, because he's 0 2 now and he's basic at this yeah, point he's, he's basically out. Uh, quick tip because they said like, Oh, but they might have a chance. No. 2-0 meant you're out. Well, 0-2 and two meant you're out. You have to be, at the end of three rounds, you have to be at least 2-1 and one yeah. to move on. Yeah. Which, uh, yeah, basically any 0-2 zero, uh, zero people are... Eliminated. 
if you're one and one and you lose your next fight, you are dead. So that is still mega pressure. But yeah. So, Moldy, you have a mega. You have mega pressure. Yeah. I do. I do. That's right. I've got to make sure that I win the next fight just to stay in a chance yeah. with uh, with moving forward. Oh yes. That, that was the reason why I was very happy going to no. As <laughs> always, I would have had literally. I had already a heart attack in Joe. Uh -huh. If I don't have even a worse one. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because in Rumbles, it's pretty hard. Speaking of Rumbles. Yeah, speaking of Rumbles, the next one is Devastation, Avalanche, yeah. and. Uh, oh, what was it? Oh, Tank Off, Tank Off. So. Oh, yeah, the road that falls over. Yes. <laughs> Uh, so the Chinese teams were trying to take care of Tank Off, but then they decided to kill each other. And then Tank Off went dead. And. Bird! Bird. Bird. <laughs> and then Bird's the pick. You yeah. need to make him a Bashbots robot. We need to make him a Bashbots robot, yeah. <laughs> He's here fucking auditioning for Bashbots next year. Yes. Broga, if you're listening, <laughs> put him in. Put we, in. We, need to put, we need to put Jose in. I gotta give. I gotta make him like some kind of undercutter, but anywho, <laughs> for some for some, I've been thinking about undercutters for some odd reason. But yeah, um, so the two guys then decide to kill each other, but devastation would be the one to basically win the rumble. Yeah, which is which is sad because I know Avalanche was amazing. So Avalanche but, is out and uh, Tank Off is out. Basically, yeah, T Tanko fell over a few times. Yeah, and stayed uh, out. Yeah, I I know he's he wanted for the series. He wants to have like air suspension and stuff. Yeah, which he couldn't get done. I hope he gets it done for the next episode. This would be fucking cool. Yes, or get it to self right. Oh That's yes, that's I think the the best. Yeah, I think his full design just didn't work. Oh yes, what he tried. There's not really no, much I, we could say about this fight, can we? No. I mean, you only see it for a, a brief moment, but I do love Devastation uh, with its wily big spinner. I love that's I uh, You know, something I can get underneath and flip and then make it fly, and then it hits the floor and then bounces. That's the stuff I love. That's the spinners I like. <laughs> something stuff like Hypnotist. I can lift that of the arena nice and easy. Something is, like... Is, is, this a, is this a challenge for next year fighting Amazon? If it no, I mean, <laughs> I I have to either catch the spinner on its on the ass of it basically, because I'm not going to go under the front of it. So I have to pray that I can get under the <laughs> under the spinning uh, the spinning blade and, and lift it that way. Oh yes. Um, yeah. Don't need a good wedge for that. I can just do that. Yeah. Just and, get on there. And now we and now we have uh, what? Which one? Or, oh, there's two more. Uh, we have. Huge, Rumbles. Liberator, yeah. and Cyberstorm. Huge yeeted, uh, uh, I would say, Ooh. did Huge or Cyberstorm kick um, Liberator I, out? Because, uh, Cyberstorm oh. flipped up. Well, Huge got the like initial hit in, then Cyberstorm actually flipped him. He hockey pucked him out of the arena. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think Cyberstorm should have gotten that, but it's basically both of them really did end something. And then Huge was being huge and fucked him up. And killed uh, Cyberstorm's lifter while yeah. they're at. So yeah, it was it was a unanimous decision towards Huge. So now Cyberstorm and Liberator are out of the comp at this point. And Sad. We, it's a shame. Yeah. Hockey Puck of Death is gone. Both and of them... Same with, same with the... Well, like... Cyber, I, I don't know what to say about Cyberstorm. It's, I, I mean, I like it. It's a uh, it's a dark it's a dark colored flipper, and it lifts pretty nicely. I like it, but uh, it's I you know it's nice to see uh, Mr. Schultz get a win uh, with huge. So yeah. Otherwise, he, his uh, otherwise uh, Kroger's pains would have been for nothing. Yeah. This is true. <laughs> all, that all, that, um, all that sponsor money. I was gonna say all that sponsor money. All that sponsor we money. Have lost, we would have lost Batchables halfway through. Can I say yeah, our funding would have been cut quite yeah. short? Oh yeah. <laughs> God, if only, if only we could get paid. If only we can get John Schultz in here too. Ah, 
Maybe, 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 because he does get a fair fight now. Yeah. Maybe we can get him for that one if it shows. If it shows, yeah. So he eliminates two top 16 bots from season three. And yeah, one and one, baby. And for the last one, it was Starfire, Twinzer, and what was the last robot? I'm sorry. Slapshot. Uh, Slapshot. Slap okay. I'm, so, I'm, I'm sorry, BK. So. Now, I, I actually record the audio for that fight. Ooh. Which, uh, yeah. That, that was. The, the, yeah, I know. I actually have footage of it. I can wow. show it. <laughs> Play the clip now. Not the, oh. Get post edited in. Like, right now. <laughs> right yeah. Now. Yeah, I'll edit it. Done. There you go. Gone. Man, that's crazy. I, I yeah. never heard you say any of those words before. With the way you really watch <laughs> I didn't language. say shit. <laughs> I couldn't say shit. So, uh, yeah, twins are. Tw well, they didn't say much about the fight, but they said twins are dominated. But he had to pull out, and I'm guessing I know the reason why. Uh, no, fuck the main event. We, we don't need bro. <laughs> we don't need Mars. We don't need Clay. Oh, oh my all god. All we need is. Uh, what? Or, uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so the main event between Mars and Claymore, it wasn't going to be a matter of who's going to get out of the uh, of the fight night and go away. This was basically a um, who would get into some of the top spots. And between these two, they definitely deserve it. And yeah, they they were both what two and zero at this point. Uh, one and uh, one and one, one and oh both. Sure. So that's the second fight. Are you sure? I am. Yes. Okay. Er. I am. For it. No, actually, no. They're both two and oh. Yeah. Because uh, bad language. Uh, thought smart. Yeah, I, I, I'm smart. Yes, you are. You are very smart. I am the big. Keep, re keep reinforcing yourself by saying that. Try to yes. keep going. Yes. Um, it's fun to watch. Yes. <laughs> so it was a front hedge flipper versus a Apollo ripoff, and <laughs> as as short as this fight was, it was still pretty close until Mars decided to yeet Claymore out of the arena. I've I fought Mars. I fought Claymore. They are both very scary robots, and um. Yeah, you could expect the best out of both of these uh, from that fight. But it was just a matter you know, of who was going to make the mistake. You know, I'm surprised that they never did ETA for this fight. Because then that would be, uh, that would be <laughs> literally the best main fight. That would be. Yeah, ETA versus Mars, yeah. <laughs> and it would also be a classic. Or a rumble between you three. Yeah. It'd be it'd be quite fun to do a flipper frenzy between robots like that. Um, definitely, I think. Again, this is another this is another fight I really I really enjoyed. Um, but again, I don't associate again because I've not probably because I've not been um, been around for a lot of Bashbots history. Uh -huh. I don't associate Robobola with Mars, and it's well, weird Robobola. because. Yes, it, again, it's uh, obviously being a British lad, I do see him as having a flipper, but not Mars. I, I don't know why, but I've never, never seen, I've never thought about him with having that robot. Again, I think that would belong to someone else like him. I don't know why, but Spludle pops into mind. I don't know why. Um, uh, what, what is it? Is it Dave then instead the one that you consider with robot? I, you know what, my, my most. Memorable robot for Robobola is Packwave from the oh. old G War Street Fight competitions some time ago. Um, and we, you know, we're talking a good few years ago. Um, I remember these robots pretty well, and I remember them doing pretty well. And it, that's how I see uh, Robo. It's uh, to, to clarify, Packwave was a, I think, had a few different attachments, but the one I remember the most was the one that makes it very similar to how either Firewave or uh, what's the other robot? Uh, Thunderwave. Very close to those sorts of style of robots. Um, and they were very... Packwave was a very good robot. 
um, and that's what I always see him with, rather than Mars. So, I always, I always look at it and I think, who is driving this robot? Who's actually driving this robot? I don't think it's a robot. I, no, it's, it's, an it's imposter. me. It's me. Yes, it's, it's, it's me, Austin. It's no, me. Okay. All I see. No, I see. I see you with your your crazy Dutch machines. I always do. Whether it's Migronic, whether it's Wishbone, uh, any of those. Robots, or Mr. Krabs. I always see you with. <laughs> yeah, any any of these. I see. I see you with. I think the boss that you are. I don't. I don't think it fits. I don't yeah. think it fits. Um, well, well, well. But that's just me. Mm-hmm. The fight, actually, let's go back to the fight. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Slotting, Mars slotting Claymore uh, into the side of the arena like an NES cartridge into the NES toaster is very funny. Um, and certainly was a standout moment. It fits uh, perfectly. For me. It did, it truly did. And I, you see how the, the flipper tried to fire at the end to try and push it away. It was not happening. Nice and snug in there. Um, yeah. So. That was beautiful. amazing. Could have gone either way, honestly. Could have yeah. gone either way. I thought yeah. it's very funny to see if you watch the fight back. Um, again, what I was saying about earlier, where ETA has to do big run-ups to try and get underneath robots. Uh, Claymore and uh, Mars can just sort of shift side to side yeah. while they're next to each other. They pop off one of the other's flippers. I, I'm pretty sure Mars went over. Um, I'm pretty sure Claymore went under Mars like more times than the other way round. Yeah, but. Because it's a front hinge flipper, you need to get you need to get further up the robot to actually get a better flip. Whereas Mars just has to get little, literally the little lip underneath and then flip, and it will do. You know, it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna launch him pretty far. So a fr I think a front hinge is always at a disadvantage versus a rear hinge. I honestly but yeah, good fight. Yeah, I honestly thought Claymore was gonna win this one just because of the uh, just because of the experience. I would say. But then again, Mars is undefeated, so I thought because of the front hedge flipper versus an actual, you know, those flippers, I thought he would have the advantage just because how, I would say, what would you say, like how narrower his wedge is, I would say, and... Uh, it's it's because of the lip, it's definitely because of that lip, right? The yeah. Lip of, uh, the lip of Mars just has to slip underneath and then it can just flip. Whereas Claymore's got to go quite far underneath to get a better flip in. Yeah. So those little adjustments that uh, Red Wall was making, uh, it makes it a lot easier um, for him to get underneath and just give it a flip. Claymore's got to go a lot further. So. Yeah. Anything you need to say, or anything you want to say with her? And I, 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 I love, I'm, I'm. I'm with well, her. I will. I will say. I'm with her. You killed my father. Season, I, I I did feel like Mars was like really like how did this thing become champion? It's literally like not really known for me. And still kind of feel like that. Like it's not really. It's not memorable. Robot that became champion. Because if you if you think about the championship you're like Polis Sparks, and then you're like, oh yeah, and Mars. Is, it's like oh shit, I forgot about this guy. Right? Yeah, I, I keep forgetting, oh yeah, they, he actually won with that. Then again, whole se Series 3 we don't talk about. Yeah. <laughs> Which was a whole, a whole bunch of bots that could have won that. Yeah. And this Maybe one... This season, really. This same, season, anyone could still win it. Yeah. Anyone could. Yeah. Alright. Okay. Yeah. Wink. Like wink, wink. Wink, 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 wink. That, that reminds me... Uh, man. Yes. Remember, we're now basically a bit more than halfway through the season. At the beginning of when we were running down all the robots, yeah, we did predictions. Yes. Do you still have them? <laughs> well, I actually probably have them, but I, I've probably lost them somewhere. It was what? It, what? It was Claymore. It was Mars. It was Cosmo, uh, right? Where in the fuck have I put these? Uh. <laughs> Lost them. Imagine oh. preparing things before the recording. I was like, oh yeah, he, he predicted. I, he I, 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 yeah, I made a thing. prediction. It, I will. I will just. I actually. I posted them. In our hidden, hidden secret, secret chat. 
so I'm gonna get them back. Uh, square on about some stuff quickly. Yes. Your prediction at the start of it for first place Cosmo, then Mars, then Amethyst, then Claymore. So, how do you now feel about it? It's still a pretty tight race between those four. Yeah. So. Do, do, you, do you have any other new predictions? Or for uh, for changes? top 16 worthy? Or. Yeah. What we could do is. I don't know if Fergo will reveal the top 16 at the end of the end of the fight night, which I will ask. Yeah. But if he doesn't, then I will let you. The we thing, which is easy. we uh, we could do it maybe like next episode because that's when the top sixteen would start to really kick in. Uh, or do you want me to do it right now? No, because you don't know how to. Some rivals haven't had their second fight. Yeah, I will ask Progaf, and otherwise we'll do the next fight uh, episode. Sure. And, prepare. Yeah. Any. Anything that we need to say afterwards, or what do you, what do you guys have to say for your last rites? Well, we know that the uh, meaning of life now. It's been a good week. We know yep. which bot is probably going to be going up in maybe the top ten, maybe top five. So, uh, actually two. So maybe. Maybe. Impossible. Anything else you guys there's want? There's a lot of robots. Oh, yeah. Well, as I was going to say, there's a lot of robots that are one of one, right? Yeah. So there's a lot of opportunity for those robots to uh, to sort of prove themselves in the last fight that they get. Uh, obviously, I don't know how many of those we'll be focusing on next week, uh, but we will definitely see. I think it's pretty safe to assume the ones that are going to get through are going to be the ones that are shown. So. Yeah. To, you know which one's going to come. Mm. So um, I'm praying it's me. Who knows? <laughs> You're praying. Well, we know. We're what praying. We know. <laughs> we praying. You guys know. I don't. Exactly. And that's the fun part. You don't know anything. I don't know anything until wow. I go to the or until I go into this season or the next season. I'm sorry. Yeah, next season we'll know everything, and then the podcast is you need someone else. That's I could, or I could do that. I can still do the podcast. It's just I'm gonna be quiet about a lot of stuff. So, anything you, anything, anything you want to say with her? I've already said enough. Okay. <laughs> all right. So, uh, thank you all very much for watching. Be sure to like, favorite, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and be sure to look at my Facebook page down below. And I'm also gonna have a. Uh, Facebook pages or whatever pages that uh, Megatech and Kinch have along with Withers and uh, yeah we'll go from there. Thank you all very much for watching and we will see you all later.